Rady. Czym Matwagawatą? Eight w Kanto. Chapter 7. Shukadeva Goswami said, O best of the Kurus, Maharaja Parikshit, the demigods and demons summoned Vashuki, king, king of the serpents, requesting him to come and promising to give him a share of the nectar. They coiled Vashuki around Mandara mountain as a churning rope and with great pleasure they endeavored to produce nectar by churning the ocean of milk. Then text 2. The personality of Godhead, Achita, grasped the front portion of the snake and then the demigods followed. The leaders of the demons thought it unwise to hold the tail, the inaus inauspicious portion of the snake. Instead, they wanted to hold the front, which had been taken by the personality of Godhead and the demigods. Because that portion was auspicious and glorious, thus the demons, on the plea, that they were all highly advanced students of Vedic knowledge and were all famous for their birth and activities, protested that they wanted to hold the front of the snake. Again? Oh, yeah. You don't understand? No. No, 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 it is slow, quick. too slow, no, too the, quick. The time for transit. Go on, go on. The demons thought that the front of the snake was auspicious and that catching hold of that portion would be more chivalrous. Moreover, Daityas must always do the opposite of the demigods. That is their nature. We have actually seen this in relation to our Krishna consciousness movement. We are advocating cow protection and encouraging people to drink more milk and eat palatable preparations made of milk. But the demons, just to protest such proposals, are claiming that they are advanced in scientific knowledge. As described here by the words Svadhyaya Sruta Sampana, they say that according to their scientific way, they have discovered that milk is dangerous and that the beef obtained by killing cows is very nutritious. This difference of opinion will always continue. Indeed, it has existed since days of yore. Millions of years ago, there was the same competition. The demons, as a result of their so-called Vedic study, preferred to hold the side of a snake near the mouth. The Supreme Personality of Godhead thought advised to catch the mouth. No, sorry. Why is to catch hold of the dangerous part of the snake and allow the demons to hold the tail, which was not dangerous. But because of a competitive desire, the demons thought advice to hold the snake near the mouth. If the demigods were going to drink poison, 
the demons would resolve. Why should we not share the poison and die gloriously by drinking it? In regards to the words, Swadhyaya Shruta Sampana Prakyata Dhyanma Karamappi, another question may be raised. If one is actually educated in Vedic knowledge, is famous for performing prescribed activities, and has been born in a great aristocratic family, why should he be called a demon? The answer is that one may be highly educated and may have been born in an aristocratic family, but he if is godless, if he does not listen to the instructions of God, then he is a demon. <clears throat> there are many examples in history of men like Hiranyakasipu, Ravana and Kamsa who were well educated, who were born in aristocratic families and who were very powerful and chivalrous in fighting, but who, because of deriding the Supreme Personality of Godhead, were called Rakshas, rakshasas or demons. One may be very well educated, but if he has no sense of Krishna consciousness, no obedience to the Supreme Lord, he is a demon. That is described by the Lord Himself in Bhagavad Gita. Those miscreants who are grossly foolish lowest among mankind, whose knowledge is stolen by illusion and who partake of the atheistic nature of demons, do not surrender unto me. Ashuram Bhavam refers to not accepting the existence of God or the transcendental instruction of the personality of Godhead. Mm -hmm. Which? Um, 715. <clears throat> yeah. Bhagavad Gita clearly consists of transcendental instructions imparted directly by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But Ashuras, instead of accepting these instructions directly, make commentaries according to their own whimsical ways and mislead everyone without profit even for themselves. One should therefore be very careful of demoniac, godless persons. According to the words of Lord Krishna, even if a godless demon is very well educated, he must be considered a Muda, Naradama and Maya, Maya Parthadhyana. End of purport. Text 4. Thus the demons remain silent, opposing the desire of the demigods. Seeing the demons and understanding their motive, the personality of God had smiled. Without discussion, he immediately accepted their proposal by grasping the tail of the snake, and the demigods followed him. After thus adjusting how the snake was to be held, the sons of Kasyapa, both demigods and demons, began their activities desiring to get nectar by churning the ocean of milk. O son of the Pandu dynasty, when Mandara mountain was thus being used as a churning rod in the ocean of milk, it had no support and therefore although held by the strong hands of the demigods and demons, it sank into the water. 7. Because the mountain had been sunk by the strength of providence, 
The demigods and demons were disappointed and their faces seemed to shrivel. Eight. Seeing the situation that had been created by the will of the Supreme, the unlimitedly powerful Lord, whose determination is infallible, took the wonderful shape of a tortoise, entered the water and lifted the great Mandara mountain. Purport. Here is evidence that the Supreme Personality of Godhead is the supreme controller of everything. As we have previously described, there are two classes of men, the demons and the demigods. But neither of them are supremely powerful. Everyone has experienced that hindrance, hindrances are imposed upon us by the supreme power. The demons regard these hindrances as mere accidents or chance. But devotees accept them to be acts of the Supreme Ruler. When faced with hindrances, therefore, devotees pray to the Lord. Tate nukam pam susamikas samano bunjana evata kritam vipakam Devotees endure hindrances, accepting them to be caused by the Supreme Personality of Godhead and regarding them as benedictions. Demons, however, being unable to understand the Supreme Controller, regard such hindrances as accidental. Here, of course, the Supreme Personality of Godhead was present personally. It was by his will that there were hindrances, and by his will those hindrances were removed. The Lord appears a tortoise to support the great mountain. Kshitir iha vipuratare tava tishtati prishtya. The Lord held the great mountain on his back. Keshava Drita Kurma Sarira Jaya Jagadisha Hare. Dangers can be created by the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and they can also be removed by Him. This is known to devotees, but demons cannot understand it. So I don't understand fully. What is the ocean of milk? First, that is to understand why Devta want to catch the mouth. Hmm. Why Krishna want to catch? Because demon nature, what you do, they want to do. Demons want to be glorious, but. And Krishna because, wants to protect them, actually. Because no? they think that I will touch the feet, I will, I will touch head. Mm. My position is down, feet touching person, his servants. Mm. So Devta has the head. They have no knowledge of consciousness. The mercy comes from feet. So many, when the snake turning is going on, many die because natural, they throw the poison snake when they feel pain. So many die, but they want to not to touch the feet. So you see demoniac nature these days. We never respect her. And this demoniac nature. Mm. This is the start of demoniac nature. Go on. Then Krishna cheated them. 
in a certain way Krishna cheated them no because no in the no, 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 no. Krishna not cheat is showing he is, he is the foundation and the uh, what you say, Karta, mm. to protect this. The foundation of any good thing is happening, not with the doubt. Vasudev. Mm. <coughs> 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 so Narayan put in, um, become Kashyap. To, to, to tolerate mm. do good things. Without his help, nothing we can do. And there are two pers- type of person. One is demoniac, one is... Uh, <laughs> Devta. And one is sadhus, three types of persons. Devtas has also many desires. You will see that. Go on. Text 9. When the demigods and demons saw that Mandara Mountain had been lifted, they were enlivened and encouraged to begin according to respective modes of natures. Goodness, passion, oh no, sorry, one page too many. Turning again. One more time. When the demigods and demons saw that Mandara Mountain had been lifted, they were enlivened and encouraged to begin journeying again. The mountain rested on the back of the great tortoise, which extended for 800,000 miles like a large island. Text 9 O King, when the demigods and demons, by the strength of their arms, rotated Mandara Mountain on the back of the extraordinary tortoise, the tortoise accepted the rolling of the mountain as a means of scratching his body, and thus he felt a pleasing sensation. Purport. The Supreme Personality of Godhead is always the unlimited. Although the Supreme Personality of Godhead in his body as a tortoise held on his back the largest of mountains, Mandara Parvata, he did not feel any inconvenience. On the contrary, he apparently felt some itching and thus the rotation of the mountain was certainly very pleasing. Eleven. Now you say, if the family <coughs> chanted, you think will always there devtas and demons. Demons will take mind one side, devta will take mind one side. But your mind is fixed in the foundation goal. Mm. Then you, your chanting is a movement, it will be successful. Mind not has to be here, there, there. Mm. Devtas, it is that <laughs> one pointed in the foundation where the charta is there. In Supreme Lord, mm-hmm. or what is your goal? Mm. 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 
Text 11. Thereafter, Lord Vishnu entered the demons as the quality of passion, the dem demigods as the quality of goodness, and the shuki as the quality of ignorance, to encourage them and increase the various types of strength and energy. Purport. Everyone in this material world is under the different modes of material nature. There were three different parties in the journey of Mandara Mountain. The demigods, who were in the mode of goodness, the demons, who were in the mode of passion, and the snake Vashuki, who was in the mode of ignorance. Since they were all becoming tired, Vashuki, so much so that he was almost going to die, Lord Vishnu, to encourage them to continue the work of churning the ocean, entered into them according to the respective modes of nature, goodness, passion, and ignorance. Text 12. Manifesting himself with thousands of hands, the Lord then appeared on the summit of the of Mandara Mountain, like another great mountain, and held Mandara Mountain with one hand. In the upper planetary systems, Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva, along with Indra, King of Heaven, and other demigods, offered prayers to the Lord and showered flowers upon him. Purport. To balance Mandara Mountain while it was held, while it was being pulled from both sides, the Lord Himself appeared on its summit, like another great mountain. Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva, and King Indra then expanded themselves and showered flowers on the Lord. Text 13. The demigods and demons worked almost madly for the nectar, encouraged by the Lord, who was above and below the mountain, and who had entered the demigods and the demons, Vashuki and the mountain itself. Because of the strength of the demigods and demons, the ocean of milk was so powerfully agitated that all the alligators in the water were very much perturbed. 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 Nonetheless, the churning of the ocean continued in this way. Fourteen. Vashuki had thousands of eyes and mouths. From his mouths he breathed brief smoke and blazing fire, which affected demons, headed by Paloma, Kaleya, Bali and Ilvala. Thus the demons who appeared like sar sarala trees burned by a forest fire gradually became powerless. Because the demigods were also affected by a blazing breath of Vashuki, their body lusters diminished, and their garments, garlands, weapons and faces were blackened by smoke. However, by the grace of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, clouds appeared on the sea, pouring torrents of rain and breezes blew, carrying particles of water from the sea waves to give the demigods relief. 16. What is the sign on this? One more time? What happened? In this line, I don't understand. Because demigods were also affected by the blazing breath of Vashuki, their bodily lusters diminished 
and their garments, garlands, weapons, and faces were blackened by smoke. However, by the grace of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, clouds appeared on the sea, pouring torrents of rain and breezes blew, carrying particles of water from the sea waves to give the demigods relief. When nectar did not come from the ocean of milk, despite so much endeavor by the best of the demigods and demons, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Achita, personally began to churn the ocean. Seventeen. The Lord appeared like a blackish cloud. He was dressed with yellow garments. His earrings shone on his ears like lightning, and his hair spread over his shoulders. He wore a garland of flowers, and his eyes were pinkish. With his strong, glorious arms, which award fearlessness throughout the universe, he took hold of Vashuki and began churning the ocean using Mandara Mountain as a churning rod. When engaged in this way, the Lord appeared like a beautifully situated mountain named Indranila. 18. The fish, sharks, tortoises and snakes were most agitated and perturbed. The entire ocean became turbulent, and even the large aquatic animals like whales, water elephants, crocodiles, and timingila fish, large whales that can swallow small whales, came to the surface. While the ocean was being churned in this way, it first produced a fiercely dangerous poison called hala hala. Hal Hala hala. Poison. Hala hala. Hala hala. This is poison. Mm. Poison first come. Mm. The story starts from the three gunas of the passion, ignorance, passion, goodness. Mm. Passion is the symbol of of demons. Mm. Goodness is symbol of devtas, and snake is the symbol of ignorance. He don't know that he is going to die. He ready to do that, but when there are journey. Then poison is coming out from him, and the snake is <coughs> giving pain to the dev devta and devils both. Mm. From backside also, they are not very happy. It was very hot, burning. Mm. And devtas are killed by poison from coming from the mouth. Mm. But they don't want to live there because this is the <laughs> higher position. Mm. <coughs> I don't want. They don't want to take a lower position. They think devtas are in lower position. Mm. They catch the feet. And I am catching the mouth. We are stronger. <coughs> so demon's nature is always like this. Ego is so high, they want to die, but they don't want to leave the position. <coughs> mm. 
they start selling, but nothing is coming. Then what happened? Then they will take his tool, go and take his tool. Then three, four stool make it. So then Vishnu trying to help mm. for chanting. Mm. Means when we want to chant, we don't like to chant. I know feel comfortable to chant. Mm. Then Krishna Himself helps you to chant. Mm. Then you chant. Mm. Because our nature is ignorance, passion, and goodness, all is coming. But goodness is less, and ignorance, passion is more. Mm. Devta ne uh, it catches the mouth, uh, demons, Ign- passion, but uh, poison is killing them. Mm. And uh, God wants to help us, then some poison starts. Mm. Now, <coughs> Poison start coming. Mm. Nineteen. O King, when that uncontrollable poison was forcefully spreading up and down in all directions, all the demigods, along with the Lord Himself, approached Lord Shiva. Sadashiva, feeling unsheltered and very much afraid, they sought shelter of him. Purport. First you chant, poison will go. Mm. 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 Excuse me, what did you say? When, when we start chanting, poison You don't like to chant. You don't like to chant. If the mercy of Lord will happen, when He is the base, your mind is there. Base means mind is there. If a mind is fixed there, and you chant, and He will help you. Also supporting to you because mind is there, so he will support you. Normally we chant, but mind is different. So he now support us. No result come. But he support, and my mind is also there. Then result is start coming. The first result come poison. Then Shiva as a guru take that poison. Because too much created poison inside us. So our the poison has to go out, right? Mm. So this happened uh, when the mind is fixed there uh, in Lord and uh, he is the foundation, means he is the goal. Mm. He is the reason to chanting. Then mind is fixed and he helps me to do that. Mm. And when he helps, First, my poison coming out. Mm. If I drink this poison, what will happen? When Guru sees the poison starts coming to this, his own poison starts coming. Then Guru Dev have to drink that. Mm. 
what is meaning of bad poison, bad things will come. Old friends will come to you. Questo mi viene solo cose negative, tutti i vecchi amici. Ego, il false ego. Right. All my old practice, false ego. If I have a desire for sense enjoyment, that will be great. Many things will activities will happen. What is my previous things all will active. My all poison what I created is in my life it will come out. Mm. <coughs> yes. Can you add something? <coughs> Yes, I, I understand and I know by myself that it's true. And when, what is the best to do when we're sitting alone in the room and we notice the poison come? So much disturbance, only chanting with disturbance. Who drinks this poison? Shiva. What is the meaning of Shiva? Shiva is Adi Guru. He is the guru. We have to go to get the help. I cannot help myself. Nobody can drink poison. Are they open the mic. Nobody can help. Shiva is a guru tattva. Shiva is not a goal. Shiva is a Guru Tattva, Adi Guru. So Guru means the Guru who is giving you, helping you, they are, they, he is the Guru for you. You are not going to Shiva. Your Shiva is your Guru who is sitting near to you. We have to go to him. That is meaning. Not understand. That means, that means practically we can go in our mind to Shiva and ask. No, no, Shiva. No. Guru. <coughs> you, I cannot explain. Can someone help me travel? <coughs> Maybe. Um, I feel not so qualified to. Then no, but talk. Give to others who can qualify. No, take the long time for small things. Many long way to go. My, my, my dem is that. Shiva, Guru is Shiva in dem Sinne. Guru trinkt das Poison, ne? Der Guru nimmt das Gift im Hals. Also Guru hilft, hilft uns, um, um das, das Gift, was, was daraus entsteht, halt von uns zu nehmen. Also es geht nicht darum, dass wir jetzt der Shiva anbeten müssen, sondern... Okay, und was heißt das praktisch, wie wir das tun, uns mit Guru verbinden? Ja, genau, ja. Huh? Mit Guru verbinden. Connect. Shiva is a Adi Guru. Shiva is not a goal. We think that Shiva Bhakti... Shiva Bhakti is not a goal. He is not my goal. Shiva give like a guru to us. Sorry, my English was English is very clear to you. You don't understand. Adi Guru you not understand. Means he is the original guru. But he expands in all living entity in a form. Guru, demon, saint, uh, devtas, all you can see the nature. Who is Devta? The nature is Dev, Dev, Devta, saintly mind. One is demoniac mind. In even somebody elevate, he becomes Guru. You can also become Guru. Guru means who realized. They become Guru. Who, who, who live in it. passion and fighting and this and that, 
they become demons. Who, who is a century mind with the desires, they are devta. And Mahatma, Sadhu is different. Sadhu is a nature, simple, kind, gentle nature, these are sadhu. So where you see this? In a human being. Similarly, in human being we see, and this is also originally God is also there. Their nature they inherit. Explain to him in German. You understand him? So basically when we chant, so there's a lot of things, questions coming to us because we're just in the beginning of the journey to reach Radha Mohan, who is the goal. So in that, in between we have a lot of questions and some bad things also which come to us which we don't know the answer of. So Shiva, in in this tale, Shiva is just uh, because he is the Adi Guru and he, he it is for us to understand that in our material lives we have a Guru, just like him. So if we chant, if we have questions, we can go to him and he can help us. So it is just the explanation in a way mm. that Shiva is the Adi Guru. Original Guru. Genau, er ist der Original Guru, unser Guru Und Shiva und er ist aber Guru Dev repräsentiert ihn quasi. In dem Fall ist es ja dein Guru, du hast Shelter und Guru Dev One may question that since the Supreme Personality of Godhead was personally present, why did he accompany all the demigods and people in general to take shelter of Lord Sadashiva instead of intervening himself? In this connection, Srila Madhva, Madhva Acharya warns, Lord Vishnu was competent to rectify the situation. But in order to give credit to Lord Shiva, who later drank all the poison and kept it in his neck, Lord Vishnu did not take action. Why? Because this is the mercy mm. of Shiva, Sada Shiva. And this is the mercy in Gurudev to take our poison. Hmm. This is the Guru Tattva. This is the respect of Guru. Vishnu can do this, but he give this honor to Guru Tattva. Hmm. So he come to drink poison, and he keep in neck. Why keep in neck? Because in heart of mm. Shiva, always he meditate for Vishnu mm. or Krishna. So he not to. Mm. He help him. Mm. How Guru help us? How Adi Guru help us? How Shiva help, help us? He is want to show that. Why we go to the Shiva temple? That you remove my ignorance. Why we go to pray? 
It's a guru tattva. He, without removing his mercy in me, my ignorance, my passion, my goodness will not come. Uh-huh. This is Shiva mercy. Uh-huh. This is mercy of guru tattva, not goal. Guru, why, what is he will do that? If we cannot drink poison, my poison, my bad habits. Demigods observed Lord Shiva sitting on the summit of Kalasa Hill with his wife, Pavani, for the auspicious development of the three worlds. He was being worshipped by great saintly persons desiring liberation. The demigods offered him their obeisances and prayers with great respect. Text 21. All living gods we were praying to Shiva. Because he removed our ignorance. Uh-huh. Why we go early morning to pray Shiva to what? Please help me. Not keep my ignorance false ego up. You can remove these things. Why not we can remove false ego? Because we don't respect Guru. We don't see that. <laughs> We're not op- open to Guru Dev. That is the problem. Hmm. The Prachapati said, O greatest of all demigods, Mahadeva, super soul of all living entities and cause of their happiness and prosperity, we have come to the shelter of your lotus feet. Now please save us from this fiery poison which is spreading all over the free worlds. Purport. My whole life is useless because of this poison. In our bhajan, why not we can do that? Because we we have a poison. We we create myself poison with my mistakes, and it, this is catching me. <coughs> so drink this poison. If you not drink this poison, then the whole world will not. And Shiva drink, but he remember what I do this. I drink the poison, but my heart is my ishti. I cannot drink it. So he keep his neck. Who can do this? Is a Adi Guru. Small power come to the Guru also. He has to drink it. Why he was always sick? Because of drinking the poison. Mm-hmm. Of all the devotees. Mm-hmm. 
he will be known to go to say to him, but he drinks. We do so many mistakes and he ignores his drinking poison. With the example, one story is there and the example in day-to-day life we have. Go on, fast, very long story. Purport. Since Lord Shiva is in charge of the... If the poison is there, we don't want to chant. When I start chanting, the poison starts coming. My bad thinking starts coming. Then again we keep the japa, again we try, we again keep the japa. But this poison has to go out, then purity will come. If not, this poison will kill me. We have to take it out. Why? We take out the food. Vomit. 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 Vomiting. Mm. Food poisoning. Mm. If you not vomit, you become sick. Mm. When you vomit it, then your poison is come out. Since Lord Shiva is in charge of annihilation, why should he be approached for protection, which is given by Lord Vishnu? Lord Brahma creates and Lord Shiva annihilates. But both Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva are incarnations of Lord Vishnu and are known as Sakyavesha avatars. They are endowed with a special power like that of Lord Vishnu, who is actually all-pervading in, the, in their activities. Therefore, whenever prayers for protection are offered to Lord Shiva, actually Lord Vishnu is indicated. For other... Why mention here Vishnu, Shiva and Brahma? Because they are maintaining Krishna is supreme or Vishnu is supreme? Mm. He is a departmental head. Mm. But Krishna is no con- uh, doing, but he is the supreme. Mm. Therefore, whenever prayers for protections are offered to Lord Shiva, actually Lord Vishnu is indicated. For otherwise, Lord Shiva is meant for destruction. Lord Shiva is one of the Ishvaras or the controllers known as Saktivesha avatars. Therefore, he can be addressed as having the qualities of Lord Vishnu O Lord, you are the cause of bondage and liberation of the entire universe because you are its ruler. Those who are advanced in spiritual consciousness surrender unto you and therefore you are the cause of mitigating their distress, distresses. And you are also the cause of the liberation. Who is surrendered to you? Mm. You took your feet. Then you think for him, to liberate him. 
from material bondage. We therefore worship your Lordship. Purport. Actually, Lord Vishnu. No, this is okay. Go on. Okay, okay. Next, read. next text. Okay, read. Actually, Lord Vishnu maintains and accomplishes all good fortune. If one has to take shelter of Lord Vishnu, why should the demigods take shelter of Lord Shiva? They did so because Lord Vishnu acts through Lord Shiva in the creation of the material world. Lord Shiva acts on behalf of Lord Vishnu. When the Lord says in Bhagavad Gita 14.4, that he is the father of all living entities, Aham Bija Pradabita. This refers to actions performed by Lord Vishnu through Lord Shiva. Lord Vishnu is always unatt unattached to material activities. And when material activities are to be performed, Lord Vishnu performs them through Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva is therefore... Because he is a controller of material activities. Mm. If you see the, the material world is by control by Vishnu, because he's a Mahamaya place. Mm. Mahamaya is the wife of Shiva. Mm. So this material world is controlled by Shiva and Vishnu instructs to him to do. Mm. To him, things are more. Mm. Because we all material people are in Maya because of that. Mm. And in Gunas. So normally they worship Shiva. Why Shiva worship? They ignorantly think that he is the Lord of. Mm. But he is the Adi Guru. He's a guru tattva. Mm. So. Lord Shiva is therefore worshipped on a level of Lord Vishnu. When Lord Vishnu is untouched by the external energy, he is Lord Vishnu. But when he is in touch with the external energy, he appears and his features as Lord Shiva. Guru. Oh. When Krishna, uh, Vishnu is a part and parcel of Krishna, is Guru. Uh -huh. Because he directly not dealing, but he through the Guru. Uh, In the material world, he acts through Shiva. Uh, Text 23. O oh Lord, you are self effulgent and supreme. You create this material world by your personal energy and you assume the names Brahma, Vishnu, and Maheshwara when you act in creation, maintenance, and annihilation. <clears throat> this prayer is actually offered to Lord Vishnu, the Purusha, who in his incarnations as the Guna avatars assumes the names Brahma, Vishnu, and Maheshwara. They are gunas. Guna means passion, goodness. Passion, ignorance, and goodness. Ignorance, passion, and goodness. It's a gunas. Vishnu also living in gunas. Go on. 
54. You are the cause of all causes, the self-effulgent, inconceivable, impersonal Brahman, which is originally Parabrahman. You manifest various potencies in this cosmic manifestation. Purport. I want to say something else. You are reading every purport, then not we will read. Oh, should not read purport? Yeah, Avoid I the think purports. so. He can do the purport. Okay. No purport is okay, but I want to go to the ch churning position. No? So that will take a very long time. Okay. Maybe two, three days to <laughs> okay. okay. One poison comes to water. Good yeah. taking. Okay. Our chanting poison. Or something. Cabbage is like Sadar <laughs> 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 circumstances of God. Hmm. But I want to go to the okay. yeah. churning. One hmm. is poison come. Hmm. Go on. O oh Lord, you are the original source of Vedic literature. You are the original cause of material creation, the life force, the senses, the five elements, the free modes, and the Maha Tattva. Punyam, sorry. Uh, the key of Mataji for Balaram Baba. Do you have? Shamapriya. Shamapriya. You are eternal time, determination, and two religious systems called truth, satya, and truthfulness, rita. <coughs> you are the shelter of the syllable Om, which consists of the three letters. A U M. O Father of all planets, learned scholars, know that fire is your mouth, the surface of the globe is your lotus feet, eternal time is your movement, all the directions are your ears, and Varuna, master of the waters, is your tongue. O oh Lord, the sky is your navel, the air is your breathing, the sun is your eyes, and the water is your semen. You are the shelter of all kinds of living entities, high and low. The god of the moon is your mind, and the upper planetary system is your head. O oh Lord, you are the free Vedas personified. The seven seas are your abdomen and the mountains are your bones. All drugs, creepers and vegetables are the hairs on your body. The Vedic mantras like Gayatri are the seven layers of your body. And the Vedic religious system is the core of your heart. 
O Lord, the five important Vedic mantras are represented by your five faces, from which the 38 most celebrated Vedic mantras have been generated. Your Lordship, being celebrated as Lord Shiva, is self-illuminated. You are directly situated as Supreme Truth, known as Paramatma. O Lord, your shadow is seen in irreligion, which brings about varieties of irreligious creations. The three modes of nature, goodness, passion and ignorance, are your three eyes. All the Vedic literatures, which are full of verses, are emanations from you, because their compilers wrote the various scriptures after receiving your glance. O Lord Grisha, since the impersonal Brahman, effulgence is transcendental to the material modes of goodness, passion and ignorance. The various directors of this material world certainly cannot appreciate it or even know where it is. It is not understandable even to Lord Brahma, Lord Vishnu, or the King of Heaven, Mahendra. When annihilation is performed by the flames and sparks emanating from your eyes, the entire creation is burned to ashes. Nonetheless, you do not know how this happens. What then is to be said of your destroying the Daksha Jan, Jainya? Jainya? Yagya. 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 Daksha Yagya. <coughs> Three Purva Sura and the Kalakuta poison. Such, such activities cannot be subject matters for prayers offered to you. Exalted self-satisfied persons who preach to the entire world think of your lotus feet constantly within their hearts. However, when persons who do not know your austerity see you moving with Uma, they misunderstand you to be lusty. Or when they see you wandering in the crematorium, they mistakenly think that you are ferocious and envious. Certainly, they are shameless. They cannot understand your activities. Only the... Yes, yes. No purpose you are reading? Purpose. No, this was no purpose. Okay. Go on. Even personalities like Lord Brahma and other demigods cannot understand your position, for you are beyond the moving and non-moving creation. Since no one can understand you in truth, how can one offer your prayers? It is impossible. As far as we are concerned, we are creatures of Lord Brahma, Brahma's creation. Under the circumstances, therefore, we cannot not offer you adequate prayers. But as far as our ab ability allows, we have expressed our feelings. O greatest of all rulers, your actually actual identity is impossible for us to understand. As far as we can see, your presence brings flourishing happiness to everyone. Beyond this, no one can appreciate your activities. We can see this much and nothing more.
Srila Sugadeva Goswami continued, Lord Shiva is always benevolent toward all living entities. That's a perfect. That's the no. translation. Shri Sugadeva Goswami continued, Lord Shiva is always benevolent toward all living entities. When he saw that the living entities were very much disturbed by the poison which was spreading everywhere, he was very compassionate. Thus he spoke to his eternal consort, Sati, as follows. Lord Shiva said, My dear Bhavani, just see how all these living entities have been placed in danger because of the poison produced from churning of the ocean milk. It is my duty to give protection and safety to all living entities struggling for existence. Certainly it is the duty of the master to protect his suffering dependents. People in general being bewildered by the illusory, illusory energy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead are always engaged in animosity toward one another. But devotees, even at the risk of their own temporary lives, try to save them. Is it possible to explain the meaning of the last? Or is this to stop this and if you stop the flow? Man kann nicht Zeit jetzt. No time for this. Er möchte einen Punkt machen. But what here she want to know? Which one? Last one? People in general being bewildered. People in general being bewildered by the... Also, Menschen sind, sind mal verstört, ja. Wegen der, Illus wegen der Illusion, also wegen der Energie von Maya, ne? Also, Shivas, Shivas Frau, Spavani, ist Mahamaya, ne? Also das ist eigentlich die Illusion, das ist die Illusion in Energie. Also Shivas Frau ist ähm, die materielle Welt, also die Energie von dem von Material Universe. Mhm, ja. Und jetzt ähm, redet Shiva mit seiner Frau eben darüber, dass er äh, dass seine Dependenten, also die abhängig von ihm sind, dass sie seine Hilfe brauchen. Ich glaube, ja. Why we like Maya? Because we are living near to her. Mm. Maya. So Maya is the whole for me. We like to be in Maya. So she is Maya is taking care, Shiva is taking care. Yeah. We are in their planet because we want to enjoy Maya. Material and what is material energy. So we are there. And we are ignorant because we are created by Brahma. Mm -hmm. Brahma cannot believe Krishna, doubt. So by the mercy of all Guru. We change our life. Mm. Huh? Mm. Brahma is our forefather, <laughs> and we are living in the influence of Maya. But how we can go out from this influence? Only when we practice this way. Mm. Ocean churning. Mm. That is the point. Ocean churning is shanty. Mm. I am telling you how this is coming to us. Mm. In ocean churning, what is coming one by one? That we want to reach there. Mm. But we are very far. <laughs> so a purpose is. Purpose read. Only purport. 
No para para yeah. what is this? Translation. 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 <laughs> only <coughs> this chapter only has um, five more five I more texts. I read that the point around mm -hmm. eighteen goes that we will go. Mm. Uh -huh. My dear gentle wife Bhavani, when one performs benevolent activities for others. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, Hari, is very pleased. And when the Lord is pleased, I am also pleased, along with all other living creatures. Therefore, let me drink this poison for all living entities. May thus become happy because of me. Sri Sukadeva Goswami continued, after informing Bhavani in this way, Lord Shiva began to drink the poison. And Bhavani, who knew perfectly well the capabilities of Lord Shiva, gave him her permission to do so. Thereafter, Lord Shiva, who is dedicated to auspicious, benevolent work for humanity, compassionately took the whole quantity of poison in his palm and drank it. As if in defama defamation, the poison born from the ocean of milk manifested its potency by marking Lord Shiva's neck with a bluish line. That line, however, is now accepted as an ornament of the Lord. It is said that great personalities almost always accept voluntary suffering because of the suffering of people in general. This is considered the highest method of worshipping the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is present in everyone's heart. Upon hearing of this act, everyone, including Bhavani, the daughter of Maharaja Daksha, Lord Brahma, Lord Vishnu, and the people in general very highly praise this deed performed by Lord Shiva, <coughs> who is worshipped by the demigods and who bestows predictions upon the people. Scorpions, cobras, poisonous drugs, and other animals whose bites are poisonous took the opportunity to drink whatever little poison had fallen and scattered from Lord Shiva's hand while he was drinking. This end of chapter 7. Continue, I think. Continue. I should read also just text, no? Text. Yeah. Sukadeva Goswami continued, <coughs> Upon Lord Shiva's drinking the poison, both the demigods and the demons, being very pleased, began to churn the ocean with renewed vigor. As a result of this, this there appeared a cow known as Shurabi. O King Parikshit, great sages who were completely aware of the Vedic ritualistic ceremonies took charge of that Shurabi cow, which produced all the yogurt, milk and ghee absolutely necessary for offering oblations into the fire. They did this just for the sake of pure ghee, which they wanted for the performance of sacrifices, to elevate themselves to the higher planetary systems up to Brahma Loka. Thereafter, a horse named Ukaishrava. First milk coming. Yeah. When the poison removed, 
Surbi came. Surbi came. Surbi is coming. Yes. Mm-hmm. This milk is coming. Mm-hmm. Means you receive something. Mm-hmm. Because of the poison we cannot receive. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When you need the milk, milk will come. When you need butter, butter will come. Mm-hmm. You need every comfort will come in your mm-hmm. life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Then, what coming in third? A horse. Poison. In this cow, where go? Was taken, was taken in charge of Devatas. Huh? By the rishi. Yes, no? By the rishi, But they t- took care of the Surabi cow. Uh, rishi. Because in which the demons, in the purpose is written, the demons were not uh, very interested. <laughs> They have everything. <laughs> But Rishi who is living in the forest, they take care. Then what is coming? Then thereafter a horse named Uchahishrava. Uchahishrava? Yeah. Horse means? Horse? Uh, horse means one horse power. We send two horse powers, six horse power. My power is Satya. Power. 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 Mm. When the milk and all coming, then power comes. Mm. That I become something. Mm. Uh, mm. Then who took Indra? Thereafter, a horse named Uchisra was a which was as white as the moon was generated. Bali Maharaja desired to possess this horse, and Indra, the king of heaven, did not protest. For he had previously been so advised by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So Bali Maharaja desired the horse. Even though Indra wanted it also, but somehow So we we'll learn something. <laughs> <laughs> so how is the nature of the power? Mm. <clears throat> I have something. Go on. As the next result of returning, the king of elephants named Airavata was generated. You see? Mm. What is this ego? Who mm. took? <laughs> This elephant was white, and with its four tusks, it defied the glories of Kailasa Mountain, the glorious abode of Lord Shiva. It doesn't say who took this. No, 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 it says that. Uh, as the next result, Of the churning, the king of elephants named Airavata was generated. This elephant was white, and with its four tusks, it defied the glories of Kailasa Mountain, the glories of Bodh of Lord Shiva. It doesn't say it who took. Yes. Just... Thereafter, O king, eight great elephants, which could go in any direction, were generated. They were headed by Airava- Airavana. Eight she elephants. Eight had a direction. You go become more high mm. that I can go any direction. Fight. Mm. It's distractions from the shurabi, no? From the no, the shurabi. Mm. After shurabi, why eight f elephants? <laughs> Yeah, no, no. So we after what come? Man, many things. No, horse. Horse, yeah. elephant, horse. power, ego. Huh? Should I be the horse power? Then? Horse power, when come, then is problem. Yeah. Then ego. Then ego come. Mm. Then eight, eight ways I can go with this. Mm. <laughs> ego is running. If you keep, you you will be blocked there. Yeah. 
bad time around it. So. Mm. so when the ego comes, you can go then in eight directions. Eight directions, the fight will have you on. Mm. And your eight directions is open to go. But with the ego, <laughs> like she is going eighty go to sing by the whole world. Thereafter, O king, eight great elephants which could go in any direction were generated. They were headed by Aravana. Eight she elephants headed by Abrahamu were also generated. Generated thereafter from the great ocean were the celebrated gems Kaustupa Mani and Pap Marga Mani. Lord Vishnu, to decorate his chest, desired to possess them. You see, this money, <laughs> the wealth will come. Ego will come and power will come. Money, wealth will come. That's mm. money, money. 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 Cash. Money. 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 Yeah, yeah, it's money, but it's... Money, it's money for, for cash. Ornaments is money. <laughs> Ornaments. This, this is for ornament to tell him. We have a wealthy. Yeah. So fast, can go. So wealth come. Mm. Mm. Go on. Generated next was the Parichata flower which decorates the celestial planets. Lord Vishnu, you didn't read to decorate Oh yeah, his this, chest. Yeah. yeah. Lord Vishnu, to decorate his chest, desired to possess them. Mm. Generated next was the Parichata flower, which decorates the celestial planets. O King, as you fulfill the desires of everyone on this planet by fulfilling all ambitions, the Parijata fulfills the desires of everyone. Mm. Parijata, power means like it's smell. Goes every place near to you, who will come, they will be also successful. Mm. Will you make others successful? Father, they will come to, why we go to see Mahatma? to take the Parijata flower as well. Mm -hmm. Sure, go to see Mahatma that you have a desire for that. Yeah. Automatically it comes. Mm -hmm. Next there appeared the Apsadas, who were used as prostitutes on the heavenly planets. Yeah, if you keep it with you, Apsaras will come after that. And if you want to keep for you, then you stay there. Then you have to give to heavenly planet, not for us. They will come. They were fully decorated with golden ornaments and lockets and were dressed in fine and attractive clothing. The Apsaras move very slowly in an attractive style that bewilders the inhabitants of the heavenly planets. <laughs> what about us? Yeah. yeah. Then there appeared the goddess of fortune, Rama, who is absolutely dedicated to being enjoyed by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. She appeared like electricity, surpassing the lightning that might illuminate a marble mountain. Because of her exquisite beauty, her bodily features, her youth, her complexion, and her glories, Everyone, including the demigods, the demons, and the humans, human beings, desired her. They were attracted because she is the source of all opulences.
The king of heaven, Indra, brought a suitable sitting place for the goddess of fortune. All the rivers of sacred water, such as the Ganges and the Yamuna, personified themselves. And each of them brought pure water in golden water pots for Mother Lakshmi, the goddess of fortune. The land became a person and collected all the drugs and herbs needed for installing the deity. The cows delivered five products, namely milk, yogurt, ghee, urine and cow dung. And spring personified collected everything produced in spring during the months of Chaitra and Vaisakha, April and May. The great sages performed the bathing ceremony of the goddess of fortune as directed in the authorized scriptures. The Gandharvas chanted all auspicious Vedic mantras and the professional women dancers were nicely danced, nicely danced and sang authorized songs prescribed in the Vedas. The clouds in personified form beat various types of drums, known as Mirdangas, Panavas, Murajas, and Annakas. They also blew conch shells and bugles, known as Gumukas, and played flutes and string instruments. The combined sound of the instruments was tumultuous. Thereafter, the great elephants from all the directions carried big water jugs full of Ganges water and bathed the goddess of fortune to the accompaniment of Vedic mantras chanted by learned brahmanas. When thus being bathed, the goddess of fortune maintained her original style with a lotus flower in her hand and she appeared very beautiful. The goddess of fortune is the most chaste for she does not know anyone but the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The ocean, which is the source of all valuable jewels, supply the upper and lower portions of a yellow silken garment. The predominating deity of the water, Varuna, presented flower garlands surrounded by six-legged bumblebees, drunken with honey. Vishwakarma, one of the great, one of the Prajapatis, supplied varieties of decorated ornaments. The goddess of learning, Saraswati, supplied a necklace. Lord Brahma supplied a lotus flower, and the inhabitants of Nagaloka supplied earrings. While walking among the Gandharvas, Yakshas, Asuras, Siddhas, Charanas, and then Denizens of heaven. Oh, really? No. 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 Thereafter, Mother Lakshmi, the goddess of fortune, having properly celebrated with an auspicious ritualistic ceremony, began moving about, holding in her hand a garland of lotus flowers, which were surrounded by humming bumblebees. Smiling with shyness, her cheeks decorated by her earrings, she looked extremely beautiful. Her true breasts, which were symmetrically and nicely situated, were covered with sandalwood pulp and kunkuma powder, and her waist was very thin as she walked here and there. Her ankle bells jingling softly, she appeared like a creeper of gold. While walking among the Gandharvas, Yakshas, Ashuras, Siddhas, Charanas, and the denizens of heaven, Lakshmi Devi, the goddess of fortune, was scrutinizingly examining them. But she could not find anyone naturally endowed with all good qualities. None of them was devoid of faults, 
and therefore she could not take shelter of any of them. The goddess of fortune, examining the assembly, thought in this way. Someone who has undergone great austerity has not yet conquered anger. Someone who possesses knowledge, but he has not conquered material desires. Someone is a very great personality, but he cannot conquer lusty desires. Even a great personality depends on something else. How then can he be the supreme controller? Someone may possess full knowledge of religious or religion, but still not be kind to all living entities. In someone, whether human or demigod, there may be renunciation, but that is not the cause of liberation. Someone may possess great power and yet be unable to check the power of eternal time. Someone else may have renounced attachment to the material world, yet he cannot compare to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Therefore, no one is completely freed from the influence of the material modes of nature. Someone may have longevity but not have auspiciousness or good behavior. Someone may have both auspiciousness and good behavior, but the duration of his life is not fixed. Although such demigods as Lord Shiva have eternal life, they have inauspicious habits, like living in crematoriums. And even if others are well qualified in all respects, they are not devotees of the Personality of Godhead. Shukadeva Goswami continued, In this way, after full deliberation, the Goddess of Fortune accepted Mukunda as her husband, because although he is independent and not in want of her, he possesses all transcendental qualities and mystic powers and is therefore the most desirable. Approaching the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the Goddess of Fortune placed upon his shoulders the garland of newly grown lotus flowers, which was surrounded by humming bumblebees searching for honey. Then, expecting to get a place on the bosom of the Lord, she remained standing by his side, her face smiling in shyness. The Supreme Personality of Godhead is the father of the three worlds, and his bosom is the residence of Mother Lakshmi, the Goddess of Fortune, the procreator of all opulences. The Goddess of Fortune, by her favorable and merciful glance, can increase the opulence of the three worlds, along with their inhabitants and their directors, the demigods. The inhabitants of Gandharva Loka and Charana Loka then took the opportunity to play their musical instruments, such as conchas, bugles and drums. They began dancing and singing along with their wives. Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva, the great sage Anjira and similar directors of universal management showered flowers and chanted mantras indicating the transcendental glories of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. All the demigods, along with the Prajapatis and their descendants, being blessed by Lakshmi, Lakshmiji's glance upon them, were immediately enriched with good behavior and transcendental qualities. Thus, they were very much satisfied. O King, because of being neglected by the goddess of fortune, the demons and the rakshasas were depressed, bewildered and frustrated, and thus they became shameless. Next appeared Varuni, 
The lotus eyed goddess who controls drunk hearts. With the permission of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, the demon headed by Bali Maharaja took possession of this young girl. O King, thereafter, while the sons of Kasyapa, both demons and demigods, were engaged in churning the ocean of milk, a very wonderful male person appeared. He was strongly built, his arms were long, stout and strong. His neck, which was marked with three lines, resembled a concha. His eyes were reddish and his complexion was blackish. He was very young. He was garlanded with flowers and his entire body was fully decorated with various ornaments. He was dressed in yellow garments and wore brightly polished earrings made of pearls. The tips of his hair were anointed with oil and his chest was very broad. His body had all good features. He was stout and strong like a lion and he was decorated with bangles. In his hand he carried a jug filled to the top with nectar. This person was Dan Vantari, a plenary proportion of a plenary proportion of Lord Vishnu. He was very conversant with the science of medicine and as one of the demigods he was permitted to take share in sacrifices. Upon seeing Danvantari carrying the jug of nectar, the demons desiring the jug. Lakshmi coming up. Lakshmi came, yes. Money will come. Then after the last point is nectar, and then and then drunkenness. Then nectar will come. If you need nectar. Your spiritual identity, then that has to be cared. Mm. If you anything catch for you, mm. you stop that. Mm. Nectar is your spiritual identity. Mm. And it happens to everyone. <laughs> 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 hmm? <laughs> eight elephant. Means I eight ways and go. When I remember my twenty-two years. I become like eight elephants, yeah. every year place going, <laughs> and everywhere was okay. <laughs> everywhere successful. Means all where you can successful is all chanting reason. Mm -hmm. Chanting gives you this. This, this so like, should not be the goal, but this should not be our goal. No, no. Where I am standing, where I cross it, mm. what is my bhajan? Mm. Where I cross it, mm. oh, we are still in poison. Mm. Which place we grow? Mm. For because of the poison I cannot chant. Mm. It's wise to go and give to Guru there. Mm. Why bother for taking poison from <coughs> you? <coughs> Done? No. Should put on water grave? Hot water? Yeah. Uh, yes. On the switch only. The switch is on. And then open. Open, no? After. You have to finish. Throw the water out to the bottom bucket. In this bucket is a full 
Oh, okay. Mm. Is it finished? Or do now. Mm. Not much. Amrita. After that, Amrita is to restart. But how? What is coming from the journey? Mm. Mm. This is all bhajan. Mm. Mm. Bhajan kriya. It's all coming like this. Mm. This is my realization. Mm. Wow. <coughs> this is the steps all coming in life. And which stage you are, you can check in by them. Mm. Mm. It has to go like that. Mm. Ah, go. This will come, this will come. Seeing Danvantari carrying the jug of nectar, the demons desiring the jug and its contents immediately snatched it away by force. No, it's okay. This is down here. Okay. After that, different path. Mm -hmm. So all the Bhagavat, <coughs> Srimad Bhagavat is a story, and behind that is a meaning. So we have to listen. Sapta lit sunakaru. Bhagavad Sapta. It's very good to listen. Listening is a very good process. You have a Hindi, so you can more go inside. Some glasses is happening. Four thirty minutes of that. Listening is a very learning. Listening teaches you to how to go deep. Even if we don't understand the meaning behind. No, no, no. Need to, we need to understand. How much I will understand? I don't need to understand everything. Who want to understand is confused. You don't understand. I don't understand. I never ask. Why to understand? We have to see the goal. That to understand. Mm. Mm. What is my goal? How to clean my goal? Way? Mm. Reaching? Mm. Mm. If I now see the foundation, Karkar died. Is in foundation that I don't see why this happened, and I don't see nectar is the goal of my life. Many things will come. That's why David got to catch it like a process of choosing. I need this. I need this. Then this life finishes. You should wait to get on. 